Right now, Russian warships are positioning themselves for battle as troops on the ground for both Russia and Ukraine prepare military drills. Now, so far, talks with NATO allies and Russian President Vladimir Putin have not worked, with sources saying his list of demands is so expansive they could not be met. Florida Congressman and retired Green Beret Michael Waltz joining us right now to discuss. Great to see you, as always. Good morning to you. Hey, good to be with you. So we know the, the, the premise is Putin wants assurances Ukraine would not be allowed to ever join NATO. As a member of the House Armed Services Committee, what do you make, though, of what's taking place right now? Is Putin pretending to be in talks to get his, his military in place? Are we about to gauge in war? What should the world be preparing to see in the coming weeks? Well, Putin's continued his military buildup, and it is massive. Uh, it's unlike anything uh, we've seen since the Cold War, World War II. Uh, during these talks, uh, I personally don't think he's ever been serious about these talks. He knew uh, NATO could never basically hand its future over to what Putin likes and, and, and doesn't like. But what it's done is it's bought him time uh, for, for this buildup. And it's also exposed uh, various fissures and cracks in the NATO alliance. And we've seen that most strikingly with Germany. Uh, that has moved headlong towards a green energy future, uh, uh, backed away from nuclear, backed away from coal. Uh, obviously, the renewables can't handle the load of a modern economy, uh, and now they are wholly dependent on Russian gas. Putin knows it, uh, and therefore he knows any type of response from the Europeans is not going to be unified, including sanctions. Uh, and he thinks he can get away with it right now, just like he got away with it under the Obama administration. So, so what's the strategy here then? What should the U.S., what should the role be for us? And what do you think yeah. is going to, I mean, it, it sounds like uh, barring uh, literally everybody in NATO coming together and agreeing on making these sanctions, I don't, I don't see there's any resolution other than maybe uh, going to battle. Well, you know, I think the first question is what's the, what's in the American interest and why should the American people uh, care, frankly? Uh, and, and the answer there is that Putin intends to recreate the old Soviet Union, uh, and he's not going to stop with Ukraine. Uh, also, the rest of the world is watching. Z, uh, the Iranians, the North Koreans and others are watching if we abandon yet another ally as we abandoned uh, our allies in Afghanistan. Look, I don't think this rises to the level of American boots on the ground in Ukraine and combat, but there's a lot more we could be doing and should be doing to help the Ukrainians and to to, to deter uh, Putin up front. One, the sanctions should be in place now. He should be feeling that economic pain now, and then we can pull those back if he de-escalates. And two, the types of lethal aid uh, we can be providing, surface-to-air missiles, anti-ship missiles, uh, should already be flowing in, but instead the Biden White House has dithered. Their approach has been to not provoke Putin. Uh, all that's demonstrated as weakness. Uh, I think he's going to fully take advantage of it. It's not a matter of if he invades, it's just when and how far he goes. So right now you just think these talks are a way for him to buy time. Uh, I, wanted, I, I, I want to switch right now and talk about something that you're battling on your own with NBC after they refused to air an ad you intended to run during the Olympics, calling out several American companies for being drunk on Chinese dollars. Now, viewership for the Olympics has been a ratings disaster, record low for the opening ceremony. Talk us through this, though. What did NBC want you to change in your ad and what inspired you to create the ad in the first place? Well, the NBA player Inez Cantor Freedom and I put together this ad uh, to air on NBC, we, we reserved the airtime, uh, and, and we wanted to call out these companies, you know, Visa, Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, Intel, Airbnb, that are essentially propping up this propaganda platform uh, for the Chinese Communist Party in the wake of COVID released on the world, the cover-up of it, disappearing journalists, disappearing their own Olympic uh, uh, players, and two million Muslim Uyghurs in concentration camps that are being forced at the end of the barrel of a gun to pick cotton uh, for Nike shoes, uh, uh, to, to build computer chips, to, to harvest sugar for Coca-Cola. And so they want to preach social justice here at home, but they want to ignore these atrocities uh, over in China. And we're calling out their hypocrisy. NBC came back at the last moment and said, well, we'll run the ad, but you have to take all these logos down and materially change it. So it was a non-rejection rejection. 
Uh, and we're not going to let them get away with it. We're calling out NBC's hypocrisies and all of these American companies. And, oh, by the way, China's massive military buildup is underway. Z intends to replace the United States as a global leader. Uh, and it's American companies funding all of it. So our message to the American people is when you see Made in China, put it down. It's not just a human rights issue. It's a jobs issue, and it's a national security issue. It needs to be made in America. And, Congressman, at the end of the ad, you actually made that call right there. What steps does the U.S. need to take to produce more here in the U.S.? Well, look, I mean, I prefer things are made in America. Uh, that's, again, a critical issue. But if it, if it makes sense from a competitiveness standpoint, then fine. Have it made in India, Malaysia, Australia. Uh, uh, even even Vietnam, there's all kinds of other places uh, where we can manufacture our goods uh, than in the hands of our greatest adversary that's actively threatening our supply chains. They now produce 90% of our pharmaceuticals, 90% of our computer chips, 90% of the rare earth and critical minerals that make our modern economy go. Uh, and if we don't see the world their way, they've threatened to cut those things off and they've done it deliberately. So again, America needs a wake up call. I think they're getting the message. NBC's ratings are in the tank. Uh, and uh, but but again, you know, this is this is a critical inflection point in, in, in our history and in this competition. And I can't stand by and let these woke CEOs hypocritically back China and not back the United States of America. All right. Congressman Michael Waltz, always great to get some insight from you and great talking to you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Have a great week. Okay, thanks so much.